Hello and welcome back to another KSP video and today we are going to be doing a recreation of the forgotten predecessor to the Saturn V. This is going to be the Saturn 1B. So let's get straight into the launch. Let's go. So we are now in the air of launching our Saturn 1B and we're going to be doing a pretty cool mission with it. We're actually going to be doing two launches in total. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get into orbit. For now, I want to talk about our launch vehicle, which is the Saturn 1B, like I said, which is powered by eight H1 engines and served as the predecessor slash kind of build guide for the Saturn V or testing thing for the Saturn V. So basically what the main purpose of this uh, craft was to do was to test slash design some of the stuff for the Saturn V without having to actually build a huge Saturn V to test all this like hardware. So today we have the Apollo Command and Service module on top of it and now just depleting that bottom stage which was kind of an interesting looking bottom stage if you didn't see. Uh, it, it actually has eight different end fuel tanks that are aligned in like a vertical configuration. It looked really weird. That's kind of its defining characteristic of the Saturn 1B. Very strange, but this second stage actually is the S4B, also known as the third stage of the Saturn V. This vehicle was used to test the Saturn V's third stage on multiple occasions. And now, like I said, it is mainly just used to test the hardware of the Saturn V. This uh, stage is powered by one singular J2 engine in real life, uh, which does produce about 890 kilonewtons of thrust with a specific imp impulse of 420 seconds, which is pretty good for a rocket engine, and this is the skiff engine the in KSP, which Strange Zone has a, a specific impulse of 330, which is kind of weird, but oh well. Uh, we are now getting in orbit. This thing has a very bad thrust rate ratio when we're burning the stage, so we have to do a very steep descent profile, and then we're going to be able to circularize in one burn. So we're not, not having to do any sort of uh, cutting and then gliding up to Applewaps and then doing a second burn. No, we're just going to do it all in one burn because our thrust ratio is that bad. You can actually pull that off. Uh, as we get into orbit, I'm going to talk about our mission today. So what I'm going to be doing is kind of doing an alternate history. So like I'm saying, you know, what if they didn't use Saturn V? Welcome to space, by the way. Welcome to orbit. Yeah, so what if... What if the Saturn V was never built and they just used this thing to get to the moon and back? So I'm like, how could they do that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this one. Um, I just got into a circular orbit. Now I'm going to do a second burn and at periaps. Or, yeah, I believe this actually at Applaps, but either way. Um, I was circular, so it doesn't really matter. And we're going to get up to about 600 kilometers of your Applaps. And then what we're going to do is we're going to launch a second rocket with our lunar lander. And then we are going to use that thing, we're going to configure it in uh, curb and orbit, and then we're going to fly the whole thing out to the moon. So I figured, you know, what if they did it this way instead of, you know, Saturn V slash Apollo and all that. What if, what if this was the Apollo thing? So a little bit of an alternate history, so I think this would be kind of fun to have a look at. So I'm just going to go back to the other launch right now. We're going to be launching the Lunar Lander. And they go throttling up the engines. You can see those eight uh, fuel tanks there. Um, each of them power one, or each of them lead to one engine. It's a really unique design, uh, this bottom stage, which is, yeah, it's pretty cool. And now we, uh, this is a cargo variant, obviously. This does not have any sort of command module or anything on top of it, or Kerbals at all, actually. Just gonna be the lunar lander, uh, powering this, um, or using the payload. Um, uh, we'll talk a little more about the bottom stage. Um, opposed to the second stage, which has 890 kilonewtons, the bottom stage has 7,100 kilonewtons of thrust, uh, with a specific impulse of 272 only, which is like half as efficient as the other one. It's powered by RP-1 and LOX, a pretty standard fuel configuration for bottom stages, but uh, that doesn't matter now because it is all gone. So because the Lunar Lander uh, is quite a bit lighter than the command module. What I'm going to be able to do is once I get my docking done, I have a little bit of fuel left in my uh, in my S4B stage. What I'm going to be able to do with that is to do my translunar injection burn. So the reason I raised my periap or my apwaps around Kerbin in the previous launch was so I could use the remaining fuel in my other rocket to get me a little bit away to the moon. And then um, when we do the docking, uh, which we're starting to try and do the rendezvous right now, we're getting sort of set up. Um, then they dock together, and then the second uh, rocket is going to do the rest of the burning out to the moon, which is probably about 60 to 70 percent of the of the work in total, probably closer to 60. So that is kind of be the plan that we do, getting ready to rendezvous. And um, the way I got my rendezvous was kind of bad. This is not really a good docking tutorial. I ended up having to go around twice. Um, or go around the, an efficient way. If you watch the footage, you see I don't really watch it. It's so bad. 
but either way, um, while we do the rendezvous, uh, I do want to say you guys, like, thank you. Um, <laughs> my videos recently have been doing absolutely insane. I don't know if I've been doing something different or you guys are just, like, that awesome. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys. You guys are a very epic. Um, if you want to subscribe, you know, feel free. And if you don't want to, you know, if you hate me, um, you know, you should, you should probably click off the video if you're not liking it. So, <laughs> that's kind of kind of sad if you don't either way well let me know if you know want me to do better if i'm screwing something up which i probably am because you know i'm a very dumb person um also thank you guys at the discord you guys are also pretty great and we started our first discord challenge yesterday i'll talk a little bit more about that in the in a few minutes but if you know if you're interested in that stay tuned um i'll talk about at another point uh, another downtime point in the mission uh but right now what we're doing is um getting our encounter or yeah, basically burning about. It's a pretty expensive burn just because our orbits are so different. Um, yeah, it's just it's really hard to launch at a good window because of how eccentric the orbit is. Um, so this is the best I could. It's not the best I could do. It's like average. <laughs> it's not even average. But it's a bit, a bit bad. <laughs> but um, we're slowing down now and gonna start doing our docking uh, with the uh, with the command module, which is what they really did use, uh, it's the Apollo command module, which has that Wolfhound engine powering it, and it has a bunch of other cool stuff, and it has three uh, Kerbinops on it, as you guys probably saw, I forgot who was in it, but it's, it wasn't any of the orange suits. And then once we get those docked up, we're going to get ready to do our translunar injection burn with that S4B stage, and then we are going to um, detach that and then crash it into the moon. Um, so it's not, spa I mean, to be honest, I have probably one of the most debris, space junky, space junk saves. Like, if you look well on Menorba, you can see, like, all those different craft everywhere. So, yeah, I have a lot of, like, if you watched my last video where I had my Buran and shuttles, I have, each of those, I left their, like, their orange tank for the space shuttle and like, the white one for the Buran just sitting in orbit. So there are, there are six extra pieces of space debris I added in the last video. So yeah, no, I have like 400 debris things, probably closer to 500 now in just in my save, and probably 300 of them are in LKO, it's a mess. And um, in lunar orbit, like, I have a bunch of, like, discarded landers just hanging out. There's probably a good four or five just hanging out there. Uh, it's stupid. But doing our translunar ejection burn. And another thing I do want to say, another little bit of cross-promotion. Um, if you don't know, I have a series called Make Drez Great Again. It's a colonization series. It's kind of similar to Matt Lowne's Life on Leif. Um, and we're coming down to our final two parts of the series. There's going to be one part um, either tomorrow or Monday. And then the final finale is going to be on Tuesday. So if you've been watching that, um, let, you, let you know. And if you haven't, there's already seven parts, I believe. So, you know, it's a pretty interesting series. We have done some cool stuff. We have space stations and rovers and hotels and bases and it's cool this is deals and crap but um this is a micro series there's a micro series i do called campaign stops where basically what i do is i fly a kerbal out uh to a certain or there's many kerbals to a certain destination and then they they plant a flag and do a little promotion for drez and jebediah so we can get elected so we can make drez great again so jeb bill 2020 guys remember to vote election day's coming up it's also halloween I could have done a Halloween special, that would have been fun, but you know, Halloween's only one day, and I hope this video gets views for more than one day, so you know, eh, maybe not. And I just did our correction burn around the mun, and then I'm going to get ready to start doing our slowdown. There is the stage at a tiny little burn to get it deorbited, or just crash, put, get, get it on in a, a crash trajectory. Uh, so that's pretty easy, and then we're going to do our get ready to plan our circularization burn around the mun, and then we will get ready to land on the mun and plant our flag and spread awareness to the Mun people to, 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 to make Drez great again, to elect Bill and, and Bob, no, Jeb, Jeb and Bill, 2020 guys, remember. You've already done two different uh, campaign stops already. The first one was uh, New Glen, uh, and I took that out to Minmus. And the second one was when I did a cargo SSTO out to Duna and back, and that was kind of fun. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so this is the third part. This will be the last one, probably, because, you know, the series ends on Election Day, and Election Day is very quickly approaching. If you're watching this more than, like, three days in the future, it will have already happened, so... Either way, uh, should be talking about what's on screen, shouldn't I? So, coming into land now around the Mun, uh, doing our burn. Normally, you'd want to deploy those landing legs before you even start your landing, but I like to deploy them last second, because why not? 
And you should also notice that pink square. Um, I do, sorry about that. That's a planet shine bug, and uh, I haven't found any fixes for it yet. So um, I'll either have to get rid of planet shine, or you guys will have to deal with it. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, considering both options, but you'll see in the future. I'll, I'll figure something out. Uh, now we're just doing our finale, finale, final burn. That's, you know, that's kind of weird, but weird grammar. Uh, coming in now, coming in nice and slow. Actually, this landing goes a little bit. Eh. Uh, the lunar lander has issues controlling itself because it doesn't have any reaction wheels. But either way, touchdown! Welcome to the Mun. We have made it. Pretty easy flight or landing with the lunar lander. That's way too much delta V, but you know, either way. Get EVA or Kerbal. Get some funky music on. I really like this music, especially for EVA activities. I think it's I think it's great fun. And then this guy's gonna take a little bit of a joy ride around the moon. While that happens, I am gonna talk about the Discord challenges. So if you uh, don't care about Discord challenges, you can just skip maybe a minute in the video and I stop. But basically, I'm bringing back the Reddit kind of challenges that people used to do, and I'm trying trying to do just some cool challenges for people if they are interested. And uh, today is the yesterday I announced at midnight the very first challenge of the of the of the challenges they run for one week so you'll have until uh next saturday to finish your challenge and submit it if you want to and um the challenge just planted the flag now um this is you know raise awareness for J bill jeb and bill and see there's our there's our flag and make sure it's great again right guys but um uh, either way um yeah, so you'll have a week to do it if you're interested, and you can either submit your craft via either a screenshot or a video, or like maybe multiple screenshots of the mission. And then, um, yeah, um, there I have more information about it in my Discord if you're interested. And uh, basically, um, week one uh, is going to be a recreation of the Sea Dragon. So um, if you are interested in making a Sea Dragon, um, I'll throw a picture on screen of what a Sea Dragon is. It's pretty cool. If you want to look into it more, um, you can. I'll maybe put some links or something in the description. But um, that's, that's the challenges. Um, that's all I really have to say about them. And we are now back in the air with our Lunar Lander and going to rendezvous back up with our command module and head back to a Kerbin. Um, yeah, yeah, that's basically the gist of it, so if you're interested, or if you're not, and eh, I just wasted your time, my bad. Now just doing the rendezvous, or getting ready to do the rendezvous uh, with the command module. It's much easier to do rendezvous around the month, uh, just because everything happens a little bit slower, and there's a lot less room for stuff to happen, because, you know, low Mun orbit is a lot smaller than low Kerbin orbit, um, if you weren't aware. You know, there's a lot, lot, lot less going on. It's pretty much simple. I did my first docking actually around Minmus. It took me a while. I was so happy the first time I got a docking to work. Um, excuse the fact that the the lunar lander does not look like the real one. There's not supposed to be that skirt. That skirt's supposed to detach uh, following the staging, but uh, I put stuff in the wrong place. So, eh. Also, my bad. Yeah. Um, fun fact about the lunar lander. Um, that upper stage engine could only fire one time, and they couldn't test it on Earth because it would get like a bunch of stuff clogged in it after it fired. Um, so you couldn't really fire it multiple times. So, and they're just doing the docking now. But um, you guys have seen a million docking. I don't need to talk through it. Um, essentially, um, it, it, the engine had never been tested before. Before it was actually used on the mission. So, yeah, you know, when they were on the moon, and you know. That engine had better fire, or else they're having issues, and it was a pretty, pretty, a pretty, pretty sketchy situation. Another sketchy situation is this return course I've planned, which is basically just go straight at Kerbin, um, because I thought that'd be fun. Just you know, who needs to do any sort of ridiculous, normal re-entry? We can just fall straight towards Kerbin because you know that's normal. Uh, now time will be pretty much <laughs> straight down to Kerbin. I'm getting ready to detach. Uh, there you go, detaching the service module. Another thing, um, I put the docking port in the wrong spot, as you can, as you can tell in a second when you see that the fairing is actually the one hitting the atmosphere. I'm like, oh no, this could be bad. So what I'm, so yeah, this this could be really bad. I was like, oh no, what am I gonna have to do now? But luckily, the fairing exploded, and then that exposed the heat shield. I was afraid the whole thing was just gonna explode, but it looks like the fairing. And I thought the fairing was going to explode everything else with this explosion, but never. I, this was. I'm glad that worked out. Obviously, that's how they did it in real life. Um, but Alpha, everything worked out in the end, and then we can get ready to de de deploy our drogue shoot, and then followed by our main parachutes, and then that will conclude today's lovely, lovely mission. Uh, gonna once those uh, once that one guy expands all the way, then I'm gonna 
cut it and then put the main three shoots out and then that's going to bring us like i said to the end of the video so um thank you guys for watching hope you guys enjoyed the video pretty snazzy dazzy video i hope you maybe 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 it sucked i don't, I don't know <laughs> you know i mean i think I, I find that the creator of the video is usually not a very good critic of the video but either way we have just about there it is there's splashdown all right that's going to be it i'm going to throw some cards on screen now for some videos you can click on i'd like to thank you for watching with we'll the next time please write our comments this video once again thank you for watching with we'll the next time and bye